Excuse me, little dog. Hi, guys. Well, it has turned into a cold, nasty, blustery. It is a 54 degree second day of the fall of 2023 here in uh, paradise at Bugs and My Dog Farm. Uh, 54 degrees on the second day of fall. Uh, that would be Sunday, September 24th, 2023, of course, as we close out an absolutely delightful, cool, rainy, flower-filled summer. The nicest, coolest, uh, most pleasant summer I have ever spent in my entire life in upstate New York. An absolute glorious summer of 2023, but apparently the rest of the planet uh, did not uh, share in our bounty, I guess, and we're still getting recaps, uh, looking back, and more importantly, looking forward. And good Lord, guys, going on to the mainstream media news, right here on Yahoo News on Sunday morning, in the second day of the fall of 2023. Good God. Uh... As Al Gore would talk about a walk through the book of Revelation every time you open the mainstream media news. I can throw a dart anywhere in Yahoo News today, but we are going to give the nod for today's chronicle of the collapse to this fellow I think I, I probably read over the years, one or two things by this uh, doomer uh, officially calling himself an eschatologist. An eschatologist is somebody basically who studies the end of the world. The eschatology, the end of the world. This is this fellow, Emilio I'm sorry, not Emilio, Emil P. Torres, T-O-R-R-E-S. He's got a fine website. I'm just going to read the first paragraph of Emil's uh, bio so you know who you're dealing with. Uh, <clears throat> take it away, Emil. My work over the past decade and a half has centered around a single theme, eschatology including religious, secular, and scientific eschatologies. More recently, I have focused on the ethical and evaluative impl implications of human extinction, as well as the history of thinking about human extinction within the Western tradition, topics that, somewhat surprisingly, have received very little attention from scholars. Probably the best description for what I do would be eschatologist or philosopher of human extinction. So right here in Yahoo News today, actually from uh, Salon Magazine. Salon Magazine uh, has invited uh, Emil Torres to write an article. And so Emil is looking, who obviously does not live in the Finger Lakes of New York. Clearly this man does not live here. He lives somewhere else, anywhere else on the planet except right here. Uh, and this is what he has to say about the summer that just wrapped up and what we can look forward to as we enter the eschaton, the end of the world, or at least humanity. Take it away, Emil Torres, Salon Magazine, and Yahoo News. <clears throat> oh boy, I hope my computer battery lasts this time. <clears throat> Think this summer was bad? 
No, it was the nicest summer of my entire life. Anyway, think this summer was bad? It might be the best one you and I will ever see. Have we heard this Rolodex before? <clears throat> this year we saw the hottest July ever recorded, and the same was true again in August. In fact, 2023 is on track to be the hottest year so far recorded, breaking the record set by 2020 and 2016. It is 101 to 105 degrees in Austin, Texas today. September 24th, 100, 105 degrees today. Anyway, we shall see. Over the past few months, more than 6,500 daily heat records have been broken in the U.S. alone, and in some places the roads became so hot that people suffered serious burns from falling on them. Terrible floods have ripped through China, Spain, Greece, and elsewhere. Wildfires raged in Canada, the Canary Islands, Maui, and parts of Europe. A tropical storm hit Los Angeles, the first in living memory. Wind speeds of Hurricane Lee in the Atlantic Ocean increased from 80 miles per hour to 165 miles per hour in roughly 24 hours. The climate catastrophe is already here. We have been watching it unfold in real time on the news and over social media. Some Unlike, unless you live in the Finger Lakes of New York, some have witnessed it firsthand, losing their homes, being forced to evacuate under emergency conditions, and even losing their lives or the lives of friends and family. For those sensitive to human suffering and the grave injustices driving the climate crisis, this summer has been difficult to deal with. It's been one extreme, we extreme weather event, one shattered record, one shocking tragedy after another, and though the summer is now officially over, there is more to come if you live in uh, Austin, Texas, for instance, and then I guess down in Australia. It's just cranking up. I guess it's the first day of spring in Australia. Have you seen that crap? Anyway, there is more to come. Much more to come. The disturbing fact that puts everything in perspective is that this summer will likely be among the mildest summers that you and I will experience for the rest of our lives. And that's probably true for me because it's the mildest summer I have ever experienced in 64 years. So it's safe to say if I live another 64 years. Anyway, I think we know what this man is saying. <clears throat> the extreme meteorological events of 2023 will be among the least disruptive that humanity encounters from here on out. Or, to paraphrase the environmental philosopher Yogi Hendlin, the hottest summer so far on record will be one of the coolest and most stable of all the summers between now and the end of this century. In a few decades, we will look back on 2023 as the calm before the storm, when life was still fairly normal. Our children may even remember this year with nostalgia as a fading glimpse of a world they never got to know, one marked by relative stability rather than environmental chaos and catastrophic collapse. For all the horrors of this summer, 
we should perhaps take a moment to appreciate it because this may be as good as it gets moving forward. Do you think so, Emil? Imagine what our children will face. Scientists warn of potential tipping points in Earth systems causing dramatic and irreversible shifts in the conditions of our planet. One paper, and he's got links to all of this stuff, one paper warns of a sudden catastrophic collapse of the global ecosystem, while a consensus, a consensus, are you listening, colony of cells, is emerging that human actions have initiated the sixth major mass extinction event in the 3.8 billion year history of life on Earth. Another paper published just this year estimates that one billion, with a B, people will likely die because of climate change within the next century. Now, of course, he does not mention that a lot more than one billion people will be born in the next century. So even if one billion people do die, the population of the planet will still be higher than it is now. But anyway, Emil just, uh, I, I think Emil is a breeder uh, judging, he keeps talking about our children, so he must be including himself in that. <clears throat> As numerous commentators have noted, the headlines two, three, and four decades from now, but at least he's not one of these clueless morons thinking humans will be extinct sometime between 2026 and 2030, at least we don't have to deal with that crap. As numerous commentators have noticed, the headlines two, three, and four decades from now will be nothing like the headlines of today. Imagine reading that. Another one million people have died this month because of climate catastrophes, or that another 20 million people have been forced to re relocate the past year due to extreme weather and rising sea levels. Right now, the UN High Commissioner for Refugees estimates that around 21 and a half million people have been forcibly displaced by weather events since 2008. Yet, Studies project that 2 billion people, again with a B, will be displaced by the end of the century. Imagine the social, political, and economic havoc this will certainly cause. Immigration to Europe and the U.S. has already fueled the rise of xenophobic far-right movements. What happens when it's not just millions, but what happens when it's not just millions, but hundreds of millions of desperate refugees trying to cross state borders? What happens when countries begin to fight over scarce resources? What happens when deep fakes when deep fakes generated by AI spread disinformation about real-time disasters in social media websites like Twitter X allow propaganda about the nature and causes of the climate crisis to proliferate. What happens when humanity finds itself in an existential calamity, but is unable to agree on the most basic facts about reality. Are we ready for this? Is anyone 
prepared for what's coming. If you're my age, in your 40s, is there any hope of a peaceful retirement? A peaceful retirement. Good luck. The question strikes me with even greater force when asked about our children. A child born today will turn 65 in the year 2088, at which point hundreds of millions of people will have already died prematurely because of climate change. If that child is one of the lucky few born to wealthy parents in an affluent country and avoids such a fate, they will still have to endure this psychological trauma of reading the news every day. What kind of life will that be? What will these generations have to look forward to by the time they reach their 40s to say nothing of their 60s, 70s, or 80s? Some people I speak with tell me that humanity deserves what is coming because of humanity's profoundly irresponsible destructive actions. We have raised forests, poisoned the oceans, and polluted the atmosphere with heat-trapping greenhouse gases. We have decimated ecosystems, annihilated habitats, and pushed many species to the brink of extinction or beyond. We have trashed this little oasis in space as if there is some planet B waiting for us when Earth is no longer habitable. But who is this we? And here, and, 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 and anyway, I'm going to try to keep my mouth shut. I just want to tell you from, uh, from at least the next part of this, I 180% disagree with this clueless moron, Emil Torres. This, this clueless moron breeder who probably knew damn well where this planet was going when, when he and his wife made the decision to bring another child into this planet. And, and then sitting there, now we're getting, I haven't read this, guys. I, I haven't read this far into it. I'm just, I'm just, I can just tell you, I have not read, I, I, I'm just predicting what is getting ready to come. We're getting ready to hear this unadulterated horseshit. He's going to blame it on Exxon. Okay? He's going to blame it on the oil companies, the, uh, you know, all of the planet eaters, uh, th this usual limp dick lefty liberal crap taking no responsibility for his own actions to what he is doing to this planet. Mainly by breeding. Alright, who is this we? It is anyone clueless enough to bring a, 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 another human uh, 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 onto this planet is who is this we. It's every damn one of us. I don't need to get back into my broken record Atlas Shrugged rant that I've been through. Okay, I'm going to try to shut up now and let's see if this is one more of one of these little whiny little breeder eschatologists blaming the end of the world on anybody but himself and his little planet nibbling bundles of joy. Okay, I hope I'm wrong. I know I'm not. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> back to a meal. But who is this we? Children don't deserve to suffer for the foolish behavior of their forebears who decided to have them. I added those last few words. Justice is not served if one generation gets punished for the actions of another. Justice and fairness have nothing to do with it. Furthermore, studies show that the socio-economic elite 
are disproportionately responsible for the climate crisis. In the U.S., the richest 10% produce 40% of this country's global warming pollution. Another study concluded that, quote, a billionaire emits a million times more greenhouse gases than the average person. There is no sense then in which humanity deserves to suffer. Indeed, the study mentioned above notes that many of the one billion deaths expected to occur because of climate change this century will happen in the global south which has contributed to the climate catastrophe far less than the major industrial nations of the Northern Hemisphere. Yes. The injustice of this situation is spectacular. It is a crime against humanity. This is not humanity's crime against the planet. It is those blue meanies. It is Elon Musk and Bill Gates crime against humanity. If Elon Musk and Bill Gates had never been born, this planet would be just fine. Emil Torres doesn't need to take any responsibility. Neither does his kids. Neither do you. Neither do I. If you're not a billionaire, you're off the hook. It is a crime against humanity. A crime against the future of humanity. Yet, by the time children born today are my age, the main culprits of the 20th and early 21st century will likely be gone. I think the main culprits of the children born today are the parents of the children born today, such as Emilio Torres and his wife. Okay, who is the main culprit causing the suffering of children born today? I think it is the man who could not keep his pecker in his pants, and it is the woman who could not keep from letting her knickers down nine months ago. If Emilio Torres or any other breeder is looking at the culprit behind his by behind the suffering of children born today, he needs to go look in the mirror. Anyway. Where were we? Yet by the time children born today are my age, the main culprits of the 20, 20th and early 21st centuries will likely be gone unless they have chosen to be cryogenically preserved after death, in which case perhaps they can be revived and prosecuted. The catastrophe of climate change is not just physical, it is moral. And there is nothing much you or I can do about it except keep our pecker in our pants and not let our knickers down. Yes, hold on. Anyway, and there is nothing, nothing much you or I can do about it. We, meaning anybody who is not a billionaire, are essentially passive spectators in a world system run by avaricious sociopaths who have consistently chosen to ignore the warnings of climate scientists over the past three decades or more. This, right now, may be the most tranquil year of our lives moving forward. It doesn't get any better than this because it can only get worse from here on out. The heat records set this year will soon be broken, and those records will be broken soon after that. 
for the rest of our lives, we are likely to see each New Year break previous records. That is what we have to look forward to. If you and I live long enough, we may witness 2 billion people dis displaced by climate change and another 1 billion or more die prematurely from causes related to global warning, warming. If you and I don't live that long, our children who never should have been born will be forced to witness these horrors unfold while quietly or perhaps loudly cursing the clueless breeder generations that came before and let it all happen through denial and indifference. So, despite the trauma of 2023, it is worth reminding ourselves just how good this year has been, at least when compared to what's coming. And, uh... I meant to open this rant uh, with a a quote uh, from another uh, from story in CNN titled "The 2,000 Year Old Advice for Coping in 2023," and uh, this was another choice. I might get back to this article later this week, but anyway they open this, but I think we will close with a, um, with a quote from a 2,000 year old, I don't have the exact date, but apparently, I guess about 2,000 years ago, the Stoic philosopher Lucius Seneca, Lucius Seneca, 2,000 years ago, a fine way to wrap up this rant. Quote, A mind that is anxious about the future and unhappy before misfortune even arrives is a disaster. It will never be at rest, and while overwhelmed with worry, it will, quote, lose the present things that it could enjoy. Close quote. Thank you, the Stoic philosopher Lucius Seneca, saying what I have been saying every day for 15 years. There are two pieces of advice, one of which uh, Emil Torres obviously did not take. Keep your damn pecker in your pants, dude. Keep your pecker in your pants. And darling, don't let your knickers down. Okay? And, and, and once you have done or not done the one and only thing you can or cannot do to at least save uh, a, a one human child from suffering... The only other piece of advice, as Seneca told us 2,000 years ago, get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Uh, all of this freaking out about what is going to happen. Nobody knows what is going to happen. It's going to be ugly. That's safe to say. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be but ugly. And uh, you don't want to be here when the, when the real shit show comes down. And you sure as hell uh, don't, don't want to drag an innocent uh, unborn child in, 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 into this dystopian nightmare just around the corner. But right up until the day it gets here, we, do, we are the last generation who still is able to get out there and enjoy it 
while we still can. And uh, by it, I mean everything from the perks of global industrial civilization, which is destroying the planet, and of course, get out there and enjoy the, uh, the planet itself while you still can, because global industrial civilization is a goner, and the planet's right behind it. Thank you, Seneca. Anyway, little dog, are you going to get out there and enjoy getting that chippy? You need to get that chippy while you still can. That chippy like that. Bye, guys. Well, it's a little harder to get out and enjoy these gloomy, gloomy days like this. And I think I'm off to enjoy a laundromat while I still can. <laughs> Bye, guys.